Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be showcasing 10 must have pieces of legendary loot that every Vault Hunter should have. These are the items you'll want to raise your damage and to deal some damage. Having each of these carefully selected legendaries will see you capable of taking on every challenge in the game with ease. I'll be letting you know where you can get each legendary, explain what they do and how you can get the most out of each one. If you enjoyed the video I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, hey maybe you could even subscribe or follow me on Twitter and let's crack into it. We open this countdown of 10 must have pieces of legendary loot in Borderlands 3 with the It's Piss, a grenade mod that you can only get from Funk who's piggybacking sloth around here in Conrad's hold. This grenade mod isn't packed with explosives, but some unknown liquid that smells suspiciously of Mountain Dew. When covered in it, enemies will become weaker and receive 20% more damage from all sources. It lasts for 6 seconds and is perfect for helping boost your damage. It's the only grenade mod that provides a passive damage increase, giving another item slot which you can use to become even more powerful. On top of that, it also clears any status effects applied to your allies, which I guess would be great if I had friends. Every character can use it to get things done 20% faster, some easier than others, making it the perfect grenade mod to help your build shine. Time now for the Guardian Angel, a shotgun obtained as a vault card reward from the Fallen Heroes vault card as part of the Director's Cut add-on. The reason the Guardian Angel is a must have legendary isn't thanks to the damage it deals, but the damage it enables you to deal. It boosts your damage the further you are from your enemies, making it a fantastic tool at raising the power of your grenades, action skills or weapon effects that happen later. It's pretty much a walking damage upscaler, if you can't read those damage numbers from there then just pull this out and watch as they get up to 4 times bigger. It's crazy to think about and it goes a long way to breaking the game, especially when you combine it with a URAD or 15090 anointment. On a spellcaster flak, both your rack, grenade and lightning coil will be boosted massively, providing insane amounts of damage wherever you go. There's so much ways you can use it to your advantage and it increases your strength by so much that it almost feels like cheating when you don't use it in unconventional ways. Moving on now to the Monarch, a bludgeoning assault rifle that comes in every element and can be obtained fastest by targeting Killer Vault around here in Lectra City, but only if you're on Mayhem 6 or above. If you ever wanted to cosplay as Mother Nature and create your very own weather events, then the Monarch has you covered, summoning a Category 5 bullet storm whenever you squeeze the trigger. It just screams raw power, firing 4 or even 8 bullets per shot faster than the chicken cross the road after guzzling half a litre of Red Bull. All those bullets coupled with its fire rate means a lot of hits and a lot of hits result in a lot of damage, capping all of your kill skills and abilities in record time. If you thought it did enough already then think again, cause it'll double its projectile count whenever you pull out its bipod at the cost of your soul, I mean movement speed preventing you from jumping or sliding as well. Its raw power can be enjoyed on all Vault Hunters, but there's no doubt Flak wore it better. Moving on to the Sandhawk, an elemental sniper rifle that drops the fastest from Katagawa Jr, a top Atlas HQ, but only if you're on Mayhem 6 or above. The Sandhawk was a beneficiary of the sniper rifle buff, raising its power level by 20% when it didn't even need it. Safe to say it's even stronger now and there's no question it's my number one sniper rifle. How can it not be when it deals this much damage, firing a blistering wave of 7 projectiles that each hit with force? Fire rate and bullet count are the real workhorses here, allowing it to cut through opponents in a fraction of a second. It is fantastic while bossing, and that's where its home is, but it's also got a condo in Mobville. Normally the Sandhawk's mammoth 3 bullet per shot count is too high to afford the rent, 
but Moe's and redistribution, Zane with some Digicoin ammo regen, and Amara with Dread can essentially mob forever. Flak will have to use Terra Anointments to get some decent regen, but it's okay because Fadeaway will more than make up for that. Overall, it's definitely a must-have weapon that will cause some real havoc. Up next we have the Backburner, an elemental alien barrel launcher that like all Mayhem 6 Plus weapons can be obtained from the Guardian takedown bosses, but you'll have a better time farming the Agonizer 9000 you fight at the end of the Guts of Carnivora. The Backburner comes in every element, consumes 3 ammo per shot and fires a single large elemental orb which unleashes a deadly sequence of attacks on impact. When they land a singularity will open, sucking in any nearby enemies before showering them with deadly Merv grenades. They are responsible for the bulk of its damage and hammer the surrounding area. It has incredibly high DPS thanks to it being fully automatic and is my go to launcher on Moe's. In the Mitosis Moe's build you'll be firing endlessly and draining health bars rapidly. Its splash damage is also there for Amara and Flak and Zane can have it firing 2 for 1 thanks to Tufang and playing dirty. It takes on hordes of enemies with ease, drops bosses too, and is the perfect weapon to pull out when you just want the screaming to end. Now to the Light Show, a blood off machine pistol that belongs to the Bounty of Blood and can come in any element and has an increased chance to drop from Lazodactyl who you fight in this area of the Obsidian Forest. The Light Show is everything you'd want in a pistol, a quick fire rate, heavy damage and has a decent magazine size. The only real place it lacks in is its reload time but Amara can speed that up. If you asked players which gun they would choose if they could only ever use one from here on out, a lot of them would say the Light Show, not because it's the best in all facets but because it doesn't lack in any of them. Its projectile count is to thank for that, zipping out 4 bullets per shot from its barrel each time it rotates. By coming in every element, it will always have a place in any combat situation, and it will get the job done wherever you go. Now for the Plasma Coil, a deadly SMG that can only come in shock and radiation, which you can toggle between and drops from arms race, most often from this chest. The plasma coil ticks the box of that all round splash damage weapon that every vault hunter should have in their arsenal. It shouldn't really be treated as an SMG, more like a burst fire sniper rifle that handles extremely well. After fully charging it will unleash up to 16 powerful orbs that will absolutely decimate anyone they come in contact with. Each rapid fire burst is capable of comfortably clearing whatever obstacle you face, made even better by the fact it deals splash damage which Moe's and Amara can exploit. All you need to do is charge it up and send it on its way, it'll take to bosses just as easy as it does to mobs and works around the clock so you don't have to. Time now for the Revolter, a shield that belongs to the Director's Cut and has an increased chance to drop from Sumo and Eskatan Row, but can also drop elsewhere in the DLC. The Revolter completely rewrote what it meant to be a top tier shield, destroying the balance in the process, and that's why it's something you just have to have. It grants you 200% bonus shock damage to each shot for 15 seconds after your shield is depleted which is a bigger bonus than anything else will give you, and it doesn't stop there. You will also see a 50% increase in fire rate, which is crazy, and it boosts the damage of other sources like action skills and grenades as well. To activate its effect 24-7 on most characters, you'll want to get one with an action skill start anointment. While shock and rage, your DPS will soar like a bird over cloud 9, it'll turn pretty much every battle in your favour, and even make bad guns look good. It doesn't have a high capacity or good recharge delay making it a shield much more focused on aggression than protection. It's best with a triple stack of augments like Absorb, but Turtle can help increase survivability. Overall it's a fantastic shield that is a must have for anyone wanting to dish out maximum damage. 
Coming in hot, it's the Free Radical, a melee one pistol that only comes dealing shock damage and belongs to the director's cut, dropping often from Beef Pliskin around here in Karas Canyon. It's a well known fact that just like chocolate, splash damage makes everything better and the Free Radical is the perfect example of that. The fact that it only comes in shock can be easily swept aside when you see the damage this thing deals, only to be increased again through the regular projectile it summons on impact. It fires damaging orbs at a quick pace which just rip through targets, unlike the plasma coil it's fully automatic and spreads heavy damage throughout its entire magazine instead of per burst. Dealing splash damage is something that'll make Mo smile, and Amara can also reduce its charge time and give it another element with infusion. That's not to say Flack and Zane can't get a lot of power out of it too. It's incredible, especially when taking on groups of enemies, and certainly doesn't shy away from boss fights either. Before number 1 is revealed, let's mention some honourable legendaries. First up, the Kick Charger. An elemental Vladov Thunder Cannon that can only be attained in arms race with an increased chance to drop from this chest. You can't put a list together like this without including the single most powerful weapon there is, and that's the Kick Charger. It fires energy bolts that deal mountains of damage, especially when it's all charged up. The number on the card is high enough already, but holding down that trigger will set grow in strength three times over and that process can be skipped altogether simply by sliding. That slide mechanic makes it a perfect companion for a speed focused Zane or Amara, but anyone can wield this absolute unit of a launcher, one that doesn't skip barrel day. It's perfectly suited to bossing, but the crazy thing is it only consumes one ammo per shot, so you can enjoy all it has to offer on the mobbing field too. While you're there you can also take advantage of its railgun capabilities, you can line up enemies to see them all destroyed once you release that trigger. Next up, the toboggan or any snowdrift artifact. You can obtain the toboggan quickest by farming this chest over an arms race. You'll want one of these artifacts if not for the damage they grant certain characters, but the quality of life improvements they provide. They increase your slide speed by 100% or more, which is perfect for getting to that boss fight quickly or just general travel, but can also be used to boost damage. Zane can use them in combination with violent speed and violent momentum to dramatically increase their damage while on your knees. Perfect for those one shots, and Amara can do that too with a spiritual driver class mod. The toboggan is the best, also providing a single amp shot that deals twice the damage, but a regular snowdrift artifact will provide greater slide speed. Now for the Schluter, an artifact obtained from the Welcome to Pandora Bolt card. This artifact practically transforms you into a walking legendary scramble, boosting your will drop rate by 1000% for 12 seconds after you kill an enemy, and grants a 10,000% increase if you're using it offline. Because Borderlands is a game about hunting down those legendaries, this is a must have for any true Bolt Hunter filling your bank up with an assortment of goodies at 10 times the speed. The last honourable mention I have for you is the Infernal Wish, my favourite shield that drops most often from this chest in arms race. The Infernal Wish adds an extra projectile to each of your shots as long as there is an ounce of blue in that bar. That can make for some pretty crazy things like having the storm summon 8 lightning clouds or the craps firing a flurry of 10 rockets. Because it adds an extra projectile and how damage calculation works, it provides more damage than the Revolter, especially when combined with an action skill and anointment, but does have the habit of burning you, which will see you go down faster the more you fire. That makes it safest to use with slow firing weapons, and it will transform countless guns into things you wouldn't even recognise. It's time now for number one, and who may it be, it's the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge, the game's number one artifact that you can get by completing the quest, The Call of Githian, in Guns Love and Tentacles. If you wanted a big damage boost that also came easy, then there's nothing better to equip than this. No artifact really comes close, this one is dedicated to increasing all of your damage. 
It grants a 1% damage boost up to 15% every consecutive hit. And when you've hit the cap, it awards you with a further 90%, slightly more than doubling your damage simply by shooting things. You'll be shooting things either way, so it's hard for this thing not to be fully stacked, especially when every source of damage counts. Grenades, dots, shiny robots, it all keeps it cap and you capping. It will enhance every aspect of your build, but let us not forget the extreme struggles Claptrap went through to obtain this for us. We forever will be in his debt. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned of 10 must have pieces of legendary loot that every Vault Hunter should have. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. But not before stealing an ancient scroll that says the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge.